On today's Meet Kevin Report, we are interviewing the host of the Graham Stephan Show, Graham himself. Welcome to the Meet Kevin Show. There. Kevin <laughs> show. Welcome to the show. So Graham, we have a bunch of questions for you from Instagram, from myself, and from Lauren. We're going to get right into them as rapid fire style questions. Let's just start walking around and getting into some questions. Perfect. The first question that came up is, can you make 15 cent iced coffee? I'm sure I could. Would I want to? Probably not. <laughs> The second question that came up is, what if you got rid of the creamer to save money? I actually have done that though, but it's not on purpose. It's when I forgot to go to the grocery store and uh, ran out of creamer. So I went without creamer for about a week and it was not fun. Now Graham, yesterday you got spotted walking around with a pumpkin style latte from Starbucks. What's up with this? Yeah. Uh, thank you, Kevin, for that. I think that's how we celebrate a million is, is you go and get a uh, pumpkin spice something, coffee, drink, or whatever. Um, no, what that really was, though, we got a Trenta, and then we split that into two cups, and Kevin paid for it. There's a big helicopter here, so that's why I, uh, that's why I got a Starbucks. We've split a coffee in the past before, but you just mentioned Trenta. Tell me more about this hack. So what it was was that a Grande was $4.25, but a Trenta was like $5.50, which was double the size. So essentially you get double the coffee for an extra dollar and you split that between two people, so it's half the price. So I get to save money. Yes. <laughs> now tell me about high school. Were you the popular kid in school? Uh, yes and no. I mean, I was in a band, so I played drums. So when I was like playing drums, you kind of get a lot, you know, you kind of get a lot of attention from doing that. But uh, other than that, no. It was pretty quiet. It was pretty to myself for the most part. Drums helped with that though, I have to say. Do you ever put them on like a dolly and join the marching band? No, I've <laughs> never did that. When you go out, do you prefer small groups or big groups? Small groups. I hate big groups of people. I just, I feel uneasy when there's too many people. I prefer just like a small group, a few people. I'm good with that. A lot of people say in order to be successful in real estate, you have to get out there and network, network, network. Are you a big networker and like mixer oh, goer? Man, that's a tough one because I do feel like you have to be good with people, but you don't like I, I hate I hate to say I hate networking. Like I don't like going to a lot of those networking events. I like to meet people organically. Um, and that's just really the way that I've networked. You have to network, but it doesn't mean you need to go in front of like big groups of people and go and like talk to a ton of people. Now, if it weren't for real estate sales, what would you have ended up doing? Would you have stayed at the aquarium giving tours? <laughs> <laughs> I never gave tours in an aquarium. Let's make that very clear. I took pictures for them. Uh -huh. no sure. <laughs> I have no idea what I would honestly be doing. I would probably be doing something online. I've always wanted to do something that you could kind of work remotely at and kind of do your own thing. You don't need to be tied down to an office. I mean, that's probably what I would ended up doing, but I have no idea. I like working from home to a certain extent, but otherwise I just get bored if I'm there for too long. What is your morning routine? Uh, yeah, so it's honestly, I, I try to sleep in. Uh, so I wake up between nine and 10. I usually check my phone for like 30 minutes. I try to answer comments before I get out of bed, make a coffee. Uh, honestly, it's browsing a lot of Reddit for the first like hour after I get up and uh, uh, and then I usually will plan a video or film something. Well, most posts that I see on Instagram from people say that in order to be successful, you have to wake up at 2.30 a.m., do yoga, read the news, and be prepped for the day. Oh, jeez, that sounds awful. I don't know. I don't like that. What gets me like all amped up is just being relaxed. So trying to be as stress-free as possible. Oh, yeah, take it easy. That's what helps me. Now, another big popular thing right now is people always say you need, you know, as many sources of income as possible. Now, obviously, you've been able to develop that. But would you suggest that somebody starting out, somebody trying to build wealth, is that the best thing to do or should they focus on where they can make the most money? Oh, that's a tough one. I focused on where I made the most money and then slowly branched out from there. I wasn't in the very beginning trying to figure out like, oh, how can I get a million different income sources right. and like get $10 here and there. I was really just trying to make as much money in real estate as possible. And then when I accumulated um, enough money from that, threw it into real estate and then just kept building that. And then a few years later, uh, I started doing YouTube. And then, you know, after a year of doing that, I started expanding it. I mean, I really focused on how to make the most amount of money from the very beginning and then try to spread it out from there. How much has YouTube helped your real estate career? Ah, uh, it, it, it's given me a lot more credibility in terms of real estate sales. Nothing. I mean, really nothing yeah, whatsoever. Is, yeah. Um, it's, <laughs> it threw me off there. <laughs> Yeah, no, in terms of actual real estate sales, absolutely nothing. It's taken time away from that. But uh, in terms of credibility and the, uh, the opportunities it's given me is, is so much more than just sales. Like meeting Kevin. Like meeting Kevin. <laughs> okay, now tell me about Graham's girlfriend. What about her? <laughs> <laughs> well, how has, uh, how has she affected your budgeting? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's hilarious. Uh, really not that much. If anything, 
uh, you know, I, I don't know if she's going to be watching this, but if any, I mean, the videos that we've made together, just purely from a financial standpoint, have paid for all of our dates indefinitely. So it's not like I, I in, in a weird way, I've, I've, I've made money. I don't want to make it seem like I'm just uh, trying to make money for it, but in a weird way, from all the day, like I made money from this. Uh, but it doesn't need to be expensive. I mean, we don't do a lot of expensive things. We go to happy hour sushis, and if we do go out somewhere, uh, usually we'll just end up splitting a meal, or like our idea of a, of a fun date is we'll go out and like we'll get ice cream. It doesn't need to be expensive. So how do you multiply this source of income? Ah, oh, Jim. You know what? We got some ideas in the pipeline to be to be continued. Do you ever splurge on anything that you can't justify as a business expense? If so, what is it? Ooh. He writes everything yeah. off. <laughs> uh, it depends if the IRS is watching this or not. Cut. Now, a lot of people say you gotta have a mentor, and I think because of that, people try to sign up and they, they end up trying to get like five or ten different mentors. And I feel like they have pulled in different directions. What's your take on the whole get mentoring, get a mentor? I think it helps, but I've never purposely went and like tried to seek out a mentor or use that as an excuse. Like, I can't start until I have a mentor. Um, all, all of that has really just happened to organically is you kind of go along doing the things that you would be doing anyway and people come into your life and end up helping you out but it was never something that I was like oh I can't do this because I don't have the mentor I, I think a lot of people use that as an excuse or they expect someone just to do all the work for them which is not the case so I would not think that you should go and try to seek out a mentor if it happens great but I wouldn't use that as like this thing that you need to do and that brings up another topic of uh, starting to invest a lot of people won't start investing because they feel like they need to know every type of investment possible to make the best possible decision. What's your advice for people that are, you know, information overloading themselves? I mean, you need to know the market, obviously. You need to know what you're investing in, but you don't need to be a, an expert. I mean, my first deal, I figured it out really as, as I went along. And as long as you know each step of the way and you kind of prepare for it, you really just need to be one step ahead of yourself. Like, I, you know, got the property. I was in escrow, and I kind of figured out what that's like as a buyer. And then you close on the property, and you figure out what's that like to remodel something. You start, you know, small, like, what's it like to do the floors? What's it like to get some the walls painted? What's it like to do like kitchen countertops? Little things like this, you kind of figure it out along the way. And what if you ran into a problem where you're looking at a project and you're like, I have no idea how to fix this. Do you call somebody? What do you do? Then you watch your videos. <laughs> New Burst Pro. Yeah. New versus Pro. <laughs> on that yeah. note, do you still smash the like button when you come by? Ooh, depends on the video. Ooh, oh, okay. Now you're posting daily. How is that affecting your life balance? Oh, it's good and bad. I don't have a life, to be honest. And, and this is one of those things right now I basically do nothing besides make videos and then I see Graham's girlfriend and and that's that's really it and if I have one free night to go and do something I mean that that that's a rare free night but I know this is what I want to do right now and this is the what's needed for me to kind of break through and get ahead what's your threshold to where you just say you know what I'm done I think I'll feel it I'll feel it out usually my intuition is pretty good it, once I start becoming miserable that's the point when I realize that there's a change that needs to be made. And then I try to find that balance. But until I get to the point where I'm totally just mental breakdown, where I'm just you know in a horrible place, I'm gonna keep going until I get to that point. A lot of people say that you need to get to a certain amount of money so you can retire and then focus on a specific withdrawal rate. People who are 15, 20, 25, 30 right now, should they be focused on that or should they be focused on making as much money as possible and then investing in the pos best possible deals? Both. Both. I think you have to have an idea in mind of what you're doing this for and how much money you need from that. Um, I've always gotten to a certain point where I think, oh, if I had, you know, two and a half with a three and a half, four percent withdrawal rate, that's a hundred grand a year. And then you get there and you're like, well, you could do a little bit more and a little bit more. So I think it's, it's good to focus on both. All right. Now here's a good one. Real estate or the Roth. Can't have both. What do you mean you can't have both? If you can't have both. <laughs> um... <laughs> Real estate or Roth? That's right. You can only have one. And don't tell me, don't tell me self-directed IRA because you know you can't get I mean, any. You can't do both. <laughs> yeah. But, but between, I mean, obviously real estate. So you obviously do a lot of residential real estate. What about commercial? When are you get into the big stuff? Never wanted to do commercial. It's just too corporate. It's too like business focused, suit and tie, just old. I don't know. I just zero interest whatsoever in doing commercial. That you're gonna get out of this duplex so we can finally see your seven car garage, you know, <laughs> see all the cars and the slick white floor. I think one day that's gonna be, cause one, I don't want a neighbor at some point. I want a property with, I want a property where all you see at the front is a gate and then a long driveway and you have a big yard and total privacy. Like that's what I want one day. I don't know. 
few years maybe. I mean, it really depends on what the next five years brings. When you look for properties for yourself to buy, for you to live in, yeah. would you also be trying to find something that you could get a good deal on? I would need to be able to make money on. That's the only way I'd ever be able to justify it, is if I could buy a house like that under market value, fix it up, bring up the value, move in for a few years, um, and just have enough equity in it for the profit to make it. Because I would want to make money. Whatever I do, I'm going to find a way to make money from it. When are we going to see a meet Graham Capital Fund, like a Cardone Capital? Never. Never going to see that. I don't want the stress. I don't want to deal with other people's money. I don't want the responsibility of, uh, of getting complaints or just, just even the stress. If I lost someone else's money, how bad I would feel from that. So I, do ne I never want to deal with that. So no, uh, uh, no large 200 person sales organization coming anytime soon? No, that sounds terrible to me. Why do that when I can just make videos in my garage? Like that sounds so much better to me, you know? On the note of making videos in your garage, how has making videos in your garage changed your perspective for and your ambition for doing real estate sales? Uh, I mean, it certainly changed the dynamic of things. What I re like from a financial and time perspective, you kind of think to yourself, where is your time most valuable and where are you going to make the most money? And at this point, the reality is that it's become significantly more profitable to make videos in my garage than it has to sell real estate under, let's say, $5 million or, you know, for most deals. Like, I, I'm closing one for 1.7 right now and I have a listing at five and a half. Outside of that, I mean, a lot of them that I've just passed up because it's just, it's not a good use of time that I make more and I have more fun and I have more enjoyment and I have more of an impact being able to talk about personal finance and my interests than I can selling a million dollar house. And that's just the reality right now at this given point in time. Now you have a $10 million credit card in your wallet. How has having that credit card made you maybe want to spend some more money? You know, we hear the popular radio talk show hosts say, well, if you use credit, you're going to end up spending more money. Tell me about your thoughts on that. I barely even used the card. You know what? I actually used it for free. Uh, we got the United Access Lounge because of that credit card. And that was $59 a person that we got in for entirely free. So we got free food. Free. I don't spend any money. I mean, people are going to say, oh, you bought the watch. Okay, sure. You know, I bought the watch. That's an investment. But beyond that, like, I don't spend money. Now, do you average the cost of all your free coffees in with your 20 cent iced coffee to sort of reduce the cost of that per year? You know what? That's true. I had two free coffees this morning in the hotel. So there we go. It should. It should average the cost down. Okay, Graham, buying a Tesla or a single family house, what is the better first purchase? Is that a serious question? Yeah, that was from Instagram. I w common sense is the best answer to that one. I heard you were going to open a law firm, uh, Common Sense Law. I should. I really should. It's amazing how many lawsuits you could avoid with just common sense. Common Sense Law Firm. Graham Stephan. So what makes you the happiest? What's the perfect ideal day or week for you or both? Well, honestly, I think it's when I'm creative. I think I'm, I'm really when you're in the zone doing something that you really love and just time stops or it seems like time flies by. It's like eight o'clock in the morning and you're really into something and all of a sudden it's like 7 p.m. and you don't know where. Like I love that sort of stuff. But I also love just like taking it easy and just really doing whatever comes to the moment. That's, that's really what it is, having the freedom. Do you ever travel on a moment's notice because you can? I've done that before. I mean, little trips, like within reason, like going to Vegas every now and then is one of those things. Like, hey, you know, it's Wednesday night. Let's just go to Vegas. Fine. Uh, stuff like that is fun. But other than that, no, not really. It's, just, it's hard to take off time for vacations right now. Would you ever do van life? Yes, I really want to do that one day. That, that's one of my goals is one day in the next like few years, I just want to take like six months to a year live in a van and go and travel the United States. I think that would be great. Visit every national park. Would love to. What's your ideal retirement? Van life or something else? I don't even know, man. Uh, I don't think I'll ever fully retire, but part of me wants to stay in California. Part of me would love just to be in the middle of nowhere and have a cool cabin somewhere like a Lake Tahoe or like Wyoming or I don't know, something just relaxing like that. But we'll see, I don't know. Graham in a log cabin on a lazy boy. Graham's yeah. Common Sense Finance Channel. I love that. Now you can't answer this question with no regrets. If you could go back, what in your life is the biggest thing that you would change or do differently? Get a credit card when I was 18. I didn't do that. I thought credit was awful. And I was, I think, 21 when I got my first credit card, which is too late by that time. So had I gotten a credit card at 18, 
that's what I really should have done. You could have financed more coffee. Right. Make sure to follow Graham on YouTube. Also follow the Graham Stefan Show. Follow him on Instagram at GP Stefan. And of course, subscribe to both of us. And smash the like button. Boom. Boom.